And he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Inna ja'ala ad-dar al-akhira mahallan li jaza'i ibadi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of that, the psychology, think about it. He has made the akhira, the place where he will repay the believers. لِأَنَّ هَذِهِ الدَّارِ لَا تَسَعْ مَا أَرَادَ أَنْ يُعْطِيَهُمْ الله أكبر. Because this world cannot fit what Allah wants to give us. Doesn't have it. This world cannot fit what Allah wants to give us. وَلِأَنَّهُ أَجَلَّ أَقْدَارَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُعْطِيَهُمْ فِي دَارٍ لَا بَقَاءَ لَهَا And because Allah has honored the believers to give, He has given them too much dignity and too much honor to give them something that will be given to them or to give them in a world that doesn't have any eternity. Allah wants to give us something that lasts. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى And the akhirah is better and everlasting. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us the definition of ihsan. Now that we make sure that there's nothing, because you know what? I don't care how good, I don't care how many flowers you bring to your wife. If you're cheating on your wife, it's not going to help. I don't care how nice your words are to your wife, to the person that you love. If your actions are showing nothing but disrespect, then those words become nothing. Taqwa. Making sure that everything is salim. I have peace with my Creator. I'm at peace with my Creator. I'm aware of Him. And that's what drives me. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us the definition of ihsan. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Listen to these definitions. Those who give in both hardship and in ease. And those who swallow their anger. And those who pardon people. And Allah loves al-muhsineen. Allah loves those who excel. Think about this for a moment. You know, dear brothers and sisters, whenever there is a fundraiser, everyone's going to be looking around for the wealthy. If I'm doing the fundraiser, I'm going to be looking around. I'm going to ask the organizers of this conference. I'm going to say, who are the usual donors? Who are the millionaires in this conference? Who are those who always give? Where are the doctors? Where are the engineers? Where are the people that are at a high level? Those are who we need to identify to give fi sabilillah. And no one's going to look to the one who's having a hard time in his life and say, hey, you need to give fi sabilillah. No one's going to look to the blue collar worker and say, hey, give fi sabilillah. No one's going to say that to him. People don't expect it. But Allah expects it. People don't expect it. Society doesn't expect it. What society expects is that those who have lots of money have to give a portion back. So celebrities and athletes who care nothing about the world and who care nothing about social justice and who care nothing about the starving children in Africa will make sure that they establish a charity foundation because that's what society expects. But no one's going to come up to you when you're having trouble paying your bills and say, Ahi, give fi sabilillah. Because it's not expected of you. But the muhsin... The one who excels, expects that of himself. He puts himself to the test. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said that one dirham exceeded in barakah and reward 100,000 dirhams. Think about that for a moment. How is that possible, Ya Rasulullah? Because sahibul dirham, the guy who gave one, he only had two. He only had two. Whereas the guy who had a hundred, who gave a hundred thousand, had elf elf. He had a million, a thousand by a thousand. So which one suffered more as a result of what he gave? The guy who gave one. That one dirham means more in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala than the one hundred thousand dirhams. Why? It wasn't expected. It wasn't expected. What is ihsan, dear brothers and sisters? Whenever Jibreel salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in hadith Jibreel, أَن تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى 
that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. And if you can't see him, then you know what? You know he sees you. And that's what drives you. No one expects you to give whenever you're in hardship. But you know what? Push yourself to give. Push yourself to give. Not because people expect it from you. Not because society has those standards. But because your standard is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْثِ And those who swallow their anger. You know, everyone expects you to have a cool head and to not have a bad temper when everything is okay. But if someone was to walk up to you and to call you a name or to say something about your mother or to offend you or to insult your qabila or your tribe or whatever it is, then society expects you to respond. No one's going to tell the guy that just got offended, hey, you have no right to respond. No, you have every right to respond. That's justice. You have every right to respond to that attack. You have every right to respond to that assault. You have every right to respond to that disrespect. Everyone expects you to respond. But you know what? That person has a different standard. Al-Kaazimin al Those who swallow their anger. You know, subhanAllah, when we talk about anger, you know, it's not controlling your temper when someone comes to you and someone offends you, and you say, may Allah forgive you. Allah yaghfir lak, ya khi. Allah yasamhak, ya khi. May Allah forgive you. You're actually using that dua as an attack, because you're telling the guy that you're wrong. May Allah forgive you. You're yelling it at him. Everyone expects you to do that. Or if it shows on your face, or if you go, <sighs> huffing and puffing, Right? clenching your fists, letting it show on your face. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, you know what he did? Abasa. You know what Abasa is? This. Literally, the two lines that you would see in your forehead, that's ubus. If a person just does this, not, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, not may Allah forgive you and may Allah do away with you. No, Ubus. <laughs> but he's a Muhsin sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's the greatest Muhsin. Allah holds him to a higher standard. And you know what? You should hold yourself to a higher standard. Just because people expect you to respond, just because it's justice for you to respond, hold yourself to a different standard and swallow your anger and say, Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Let it go. You know why? Because you want Allah, who has every right to be angry with you and I, to not be angry with us on the day of judgment. And then finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And those who pardon people. <clears throat> if someone takes your right, and this is the difference between an eye for an eye, and a turn your other cheek, it's right in the middle. If someone takes your haq from you, you have every right to re request it back. You have every right to demand justice. Islam gives you that right. But Islam tells you what? Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan. Allah commands you, enjoins you with justice and compassion. What is the ihsan that Allah is talking about? Compassion. Because justice without compassion will be worthless. You should show mercy. You should sow compassion. You'll be rewarded, inshallah. But if you choose to take your right, that's fine. If you don't, inna dhalika la min azm al umur. That is a matter that requires determination. Ajruhu ala Allah. His reward is with Allah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ashura. No one expects you to say, let it go. Society expects you to take your right back. But if you're a muhsin, like Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I want you to imagine the situation, dear brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his daughter Aisha radiallahu anha, was slandered with the worst slander, accused in her chastity, and that hurt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who Abu Bakr loved more than Aisha, and that hurt his own daughter. Not only that, but one of the men who passed the slander was Mistah. A relative who Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to give charity to on a routine daily basis. You imagine, 
if it turns out that the one who caused your daughter and your most beloved Prophet wasallam, the one who caused them that pain was one that you used to give money back, that you used to give money to all the time. If anything, you can go to the guy and say, look, I'm not going to beat you down. I'm not going to beat you with a baseball bat, but give me back the money. If anything, it's only normal. We would expect that. We would do that. Go to him and say, at least give me that money. While I was giving you money to live, you were slandering my daughter. Give me my money back. Or at least go to him and say, you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't want the money back, but you should be ashamed of yourself. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, when he found out about the slander of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, he only said one thing. He said, subhanallah, it was mistah. I'm not going to give him charity anymore. Seriously, I'm not going to give him charity anymore? That's it? But on top of that, Allah Azza wa Jalla reveals in the Quran, فَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Let them forgive and let them pardon. Don't you love that Allah will pardon you? Subhanallah. Wallahi, if we remembered this ayah all the time, it would completely refine our khuluq and our character and completely redefine our interactions with one another. Wouldn't you love that Allah forgives you and pardons you? Because you know what? On the day of judgment, Rasulullah says, Man yuqish al hisab, uzzib. Whoever is held accountable. And another riwayah, Innahu man su'ila yawm al qiyamah. As for the one who is asked on the day of judgment, he will perish. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, but doesn't Allah say, As for the one who receives his book in his right hand, he'll have an easy accountability. Rasulullah sallallahu says, ذلك العرض. That's the presentation of your deeds. But if Allah starts calling you out on each and every single one of your deeds, عذب, you will perish and you will be punished. مَن لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ Whoever does not show mercy, mercy will not be shown to him. You want Allah to pardon you? Pardon others. Because you're seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the, those who excel. And one more ayah, dear brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Allah continues. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا Like I said, very, very interesting and um, enjoying this video so far. I mean, sometimes society constructs a certain way in which we're supposed to do things. Like he said, we expect the rich to give because we, they are rich. And the poor not to give because they have nothing. But sometimes the poor even give everything they have to help someone else, which they would have used on themselves, maybe to better themselves or take themselves further in life. When it comes to giving, whatever type of giving it is, or whatever aid it is, whether to help, whether to give, whether to support, whether it doesn't matter what, it should be a personal thing. Let's do it with one heart because some people give, they really don't want to give. That's not giving. But if you willingly give, knowing that you're helping out someone else and you're proud, you really want to give that person whatever you're giving them, now that's giving. But if you give with a divided heart, now that's just something else. But then we shouldn't also let society define the way we do things. Only they look at poor people giving as it's something that shouldn't be spoken about. Let's praise everyone equally when they give. Let's um, appreciate everyone and just do things the way they're supposed to be done. Another thing is when it comes to getting upset or someone uh, starting trouble with you, it's your choice to choose how you react to it. Sometimes you may want to do whatever they did to you, but you don't have to choose a better path than what they're bringing to you. If it's violence, then show them a different way that you won't respond by that, but you respond in a different way. Mana, it doesn't have to be always you ignoring whatever is going on, but there's a better way of responding to things.
Cabajito 